Okay, so welcome to this next video in the, on uh, activation of T cells. So, we've seen so far how a macrophage can deliver signal 1 to a T cell. What we want to see now is how it can deliver signal 2. So basically, if we've got a macrophage here, which has phagocytosed a pathogen, and has now presented the antigens on MHC class 2 on its surface, so let's just draw that here. So here's MHC class 2 uh, with the pathogen now bound in it here. Well, not the pathogen, an antigen of the pathogen, a fragment of a protein uh, that the pathogen had, which isn't. It, it's not something that um, the, uh, the human cells would ever have, basically. So this is major histocompatibility complex 2. MHC2. Right, and this is the antigen docked in here. Now, we've seen how this is going to go and present it uh, to a T cell, which has a T cell receptor which is complementary to this antigen and therefore binds this antigen. But if you want to actually activate the T cell, the uh, macrophage has to do more than just present uh, the antigen in MHC class 2. It also has to put on its cell surface co stimulatory molecules, basically. Okay, and there are two, well actually three major co-stimulatory molecules that I want to discuss here. So these, I'm going to draw two because one of them is going to represent two options, basically. So these are what are known as co-stimulatory molecules. And basically, um, the macrophage has uh, receptors uh, that allow it to recognize uh, whether a cell is not self, basically, or whether a cell is dangerous. So let's say our macrophage is sort of moving through our tissue, and it happens to find some horrible bacteria. Basically, the bacteria will have certain molecules uh, on its surface. So let's say we've got our little bacteria here. And this bacteria will have certain molecules that uh, no um, human cell or no self cell, if you're talking about other animals, no um, cell that's actually part of the body would ever have. Now, these sort of structures uh, that are found and associated with pathogens but are not on the self cells would are known as pathogen-associated molecular patterns, or PAMPs for short. So, pathogen-associated molecular patterns. And the famous one people use is, um, uh, uh, is LPS, standing for lipopolysaccharide. So, um, gram-negative bacteria, bacteria with two cell membranes and then a tiny little cell wall in between the two membranes. Uh, in their cell membranes, what they have is um, a, a molecule known as LPS, which stands for lipopolysaccharide, okay? And this structure, this molecular pattern, is something that would never, ever be found in a human cell or an animal cell or a self cell, basically. So, as soon as you see this molecular pattern, you know something's up here. And basically, there is a, a famous receptor that macrophages have, known as toll-like receptor 4. So, this activates a receptor that macrophages have, known as toll-like um, receptor 4, or TLR4 toll-like receptor 4, which is basically a receptor for LPS. And as soon as you see LPS in the tissue of the body, you know something's up here. And that basically activates the macrophage. Now, there are a huge number of receptors, like toll-like receptor 4, which recognize um, pathogen-associated molecular patterns. This uh, expression here you'll see a lot. Oh, and I didn't actually put its abbreviation. It's um, usually abbreviated to PAMP, PAMPs, for Pathogen Associated Molecular Patterns. So what it means, basically, is some sort of molecular structure which would never, ever be in a self-cell. And therefore, if a macrophage sees that structure, it knows instantly that uh, there is some non-self uh, or potentially dangerous um, cell uh, around. And uh, that leads to the activation of the macrophage. 
Um, so the toll-like receptor leads to the activation of the macrophage. And one of the features of macrophage activation is that it starts making these co-stimulatory molecules. So as soon as a macrophage knows that there's something up, it knows that there's a, there's a threat here, it gets ready uh, for the antigen presentation process. It starts producing these co-stimulatory molecules, basically, and putting them on its cell surface membrane so that it can... Uh, when it goes to the T cell, it already has these co-stimulatory molecules ready. Now, as I say, LPS is a specific example of a pathogen-associated molecular pattern, and toll light receptor 4 is a specific example of a receptor for uh, lipopolysaccharide, um, which is a receptor for a pathogen-associated molecular pattern. Uh, so um, there are many other examples of this, loads of different molecules that pathogens may have, uh, which uh, self cells don't have, and then a whole corresponding set of receptors which macrophages have to detect these. Okay, and they lead to activation of the macrophage, which is basically the macrophage knowing something's up, and it gets uh, these co-stimulatory molecules ready for antigen presentation. So, what are these co-stimulatory molecules then? So, this first one, which is here, and I'll give it a colour in. So, let's colour it in orange. So, this first one, there are two molecules which basically can do the same thing. Um, and often, macrophages will express them both, but they both do the same thing. So, if you just expressed one, it would be okay, and if you just expressed the other, it would be okay, but often they will express both. And these molecules are called B7.1, uh, which is also has another name. It's also known as CD80. And the second molecule that you could put in here is B7.2, which again has another name, which is CD86. So remember, CD, this CD bit here, it means cluster of differentiation. Cluster of differentiation. Okay, and basically, it's just a protein on the surface of cells which can be used to, um, to analyse what type of cell you're looking at, basically. It's a marker for different cells. So, cluster of designation... Oh, no, well, cluster of differentiation. Uh, it can also stand for cluster of designation, but um, we won't go there. So, um, B7.1, B7.2, CD80, CD86, these, both of these... Um, both of these proteins can be put and used as a co-stimulatory molecule. And what they're going to bind to on the T cell is exactly the same. So whether you put B7.1 or B7.2, it doesn't matter, basically. Okay, you just need one of them. Right, and then the other, uh, the other co-stimulatory molecule is something known as CD40. So again, cluster of differentiation 40. So this molecule here is CD40. Okay, now, what happens is basically the T cell, so if we draw the picture again, because I've drawn where I would, I've written where I would want to uh, put the T cell, basically. So if we, put our, um, if we put our macrophage here, I don't know why I've drawn it so small, if we put our macrophage here, and I'll colour code these molecules for you. So here are our um, two co-stimulatory molecules. And if you don't mind, I, actually I will draw the MHC because it's just a picture that I should draw at some point in this video. <laughs> okay, right. So, um, so far, uh, we've discussed how the MHC molecule will bind to the T-cell receptor. I'm now really wishing I had drawn this bigger. Okay, so let's have our T-cell here. Okay, right. So, let me draw things carefully, otherwise this is going to get very bad. So, this is our T-cell here. Okay, here's our antigen-presenting cell here. Right, let me co-colour code uh, the uh, MHC uh, molecule. So, MHC here is in now blue, nice blue. Okay, so this is the MHC class 2 molecule here. Okay, right, and it's got its antigen bound to it. Okay, so I'll colour in the antigen um, red. Here's the antigen. Right, and uh, then uh, that has bound to this um, T-cell receptor, which I'll colour in pink. So here's the T-cell receptor. And also, of course, we need uh, CD4, which is, doesn't bind specifically to the antigen, but just binds to the MHC class 2. So what colour should we colour in uh, CD4? We'll colour it in yellow. Okay, so here is CD4. 
Right, so that's the bit we've looked at, and that delivers um, that delivers signal 1 to the cell, basically. But we've discussed how you don't just need signal 1. In order to get activation of T cells, you need signal 2 as well. And signal 2 comes in the form of these co-stimulatory molecules, CD40 in green, and either B7.1 or B7.2 in orange. And now, in this tiny little squash space, I'm going to draw the proteins which they bind to on the T cell. So the protein which B7.1 or B7.2 binds to on the T cell, this little thing that I've drawn in here, that is known as CD28. So, um, cluster of differentiation 28. Now, what colour can I draw this, uh, colour this one in? Um, uh, I will um, colour it in pink again. I've run out of colours, basically. Uh, so, this one's going to be pink. So, that's the cluster of differentiation 28, which is what uh, CD... Uh, it's what B7.1 or B7.2, which, remember, are the two molecules that you could use here in this orange slot. They're going to bind to CD28, basically. Okay, and then there's another protein, which is what CD40 binds to. So this green protein that I've drawn here is CD40 on the antigen-presenting cell. And the protein which um, CD40 binds to on the T cell is a protein known as um, CD40 ligands. So CD40L, you would usually know it as. So CD40L standing for CD40 ligand. Okay, and basically, these, these molecules here, the um, MHC class 2 with its antigen and the T cell receptor and the CD4, they deliver signal 1. So this is giving signal 1, basically. Now, the co-stimulatory molecules, CD40L and CD28, which are telling the T-cell that they have received the co-stimulatory molecules, they deliver signal 2 to the T-cell. So, so far, we've talked about signal 1 and signal 2. Okay, and basically, if you've got signal 1 and signal 2, then that's going to now be enough to drive the T cell into activation. Well, it's going to it's going to drive the cell into undergoing signal free, and unless there's some big problem which stops signal free, uh, you're going to get to activation of this T cell basically. In, in, in basically the APC is finished now. It's done its role. It has done everything it can now to stimulate this T cell uh, to become activated. Okay, now in the next video, what we'll do is we'll look at what happens after this. What uh, does signal 1 and signal 2 do within the T-cell? Uh, that what, Well, what actually is signal 1 and signal 2? What, what's going to happen, basically? And this is important because it's got a beautiful bit of calcium signaling. It shows us a target for calcium in the cytoplasm. And um, it's also the site of action of a number of immunosuppressant drugs.